In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Dataflow Nugget Transform within Task Factory from Pragmatic Works. The Dataflow Nugget Transform allows you to create reusable packages and execute those packages with different sets of data. In this case, what we have is we have a, um, a small demo package here that has just a couple of required components, which are the placeholder source and the terminator destination, and then whatever business logic you have, you can put in between there. Now the way that this is set up is that the placeholder source defines what columns you're going to be able to pass into this package from your Dataflow Nugget Transform um, and be able to use inside of your business logic. And then the terminator, what it does is it defines what outputs are going back out. Now in this case what we have here is we have four columns coming in and then we have uh, well, four columns going, or five columns going out because our derived column creates another column for us. So we'll see this all in a, in a few minutes. So this is what's known as our Dataflow Nugget package. And then what we have to do is we have to set up our Dataflow Nugget. Now, in this case, what you see is we have a set of data, the OLODB source, coming into our Dataflow Nugget transform, and then it's being passed back out to our, our flat file destination. So let's open this up and let's take a look at how this is set up. The first thing that you need to do is after you've created your flowlet package with the required placeholder source and terminator destination is you need to come into here and set up all of the the mappings and, and the variables if you have any and connection managers. So the first thing that we do on this screen right here is we choose the package that we just set up and we can see that right here here's our flowlet package that DTS uh, X and we choose that uh, and the next thing is you need to choose the data flow task that is going to contain the business logic now what you can do um, is you can actually set up a package with multiple different uh, data flow nuggets well, what they're called or rather data flow tasks um, and then you can actually choose which one you want to execute in this instance of your your data flow nugget transform so let's go ahead and open that back up and we can see here we have our data flow nugget package. We've chosen our data flow task. And now we can go into the next step, which is mapping the input columns. Now we can see here that we have a bunch more columns coming into this than we do um, going into our, our nugget transform. So what we have is we have the ability to come over here to our nugget column and choose what column we want. Now you notice here that, I, that we have the name of the column and then the type. Now this is for your, 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 your purposes here so that you're not mapping up different data types. So we can see here we're using a DTI4 to this DTI4, DTW string here and on and on. So we have to map up all the columns that are part of that placeholder source. If you don't, you're going to get an error telling you that you need to map that column. So you don't have to map every input column coming in but every column that's part of that placeholder source you have to map. All right. So output columns are a little tricky. What this is showing you is that any column that is not part of the input that we've mapped will be known as an output because the way that this works is all of those columns are all those columns coming in are going to be sent back out because this is a synchronous output. So when we look at the output here and we look at the metadata, we can see all those columns going through short title, higher date, all that kind of stuff. But the way that it works is that the only column that's truly a new column is the short title. And if we go back into our flowlet package, we can take a look at that. And we can see here, this is our short title. And that's coming from right here. So we have some business logic in here that creates another um, column here and that's the one we want to choose. Now we can choose other columns and it will show up over there but for this purposes we're just doing short title. Okay so let's take a look over here. Right here. Alright let's open this back up. So all these columns like contact ID, title, all that stuff will just be passed through like any other transform. So here's our output column. Now you can actually change the output column name so in this case we can change it to you know S title or whatever we want to change it to. In this case I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to change it back um, and that's that's how you set up the output column. 
So let's move on to variables. So in this case, what we have is we have one variable that we can map that's part of our package, and then we should have one variable, yes, user prod name, that's part of the flowlet package that we were just looking at. And then we have our connection managers. Uh, in this case, I don't have any connection managers um, set up in our, in our child package. But what you can do is you can come in here and map those right here. And what will happen is at runtime, these will get replaced um, with the ones that are in the Nugget package. So that's variables and connection managers. So if we click OK here, what we will do now is show you how to execute this. Now, if you just try to run this as is right here, you're going to get an error message. And the reason this, this happens is that you have to execute any packages that have data flow nuggets in it with our advanced execute package. So we should see here, there we go, and it says data flow nuggets must be executed within an advanced execute package task. Now the reason behind that is that we do manipulation of this package at runtime and there's no way um, to, mani to manipulate this uh, with just a regular component. So what we had to do was we had to add the ability to take this right here and replace it with whatever business logic you have in here. So at runtime basically what happens and we'll be able to see this is that this right here will get replaced with this right here. And to show you that I'm going to go ahead and open this up and what we have here is we're going to execute our nugget package and we're pointing to our um, our nugget package. Let me make sure because last time I wasn't pointing at the right one. Here we go right here. Let's copy this full path and go into here and let's go ahead and copy that in here we go all right we don't have any mappings or anything in this case we're just going to simply execute that package now one of the cool things that we've done with this is it allows you to um, basically see the package when it's done okay so what we can do here is we can click here now I didn't put it in the UI but you could it's sort of one of those debug features is that you can put in right here in our nugget package save location say C S S I S uh, debug packages and then uh, debug packages and then what will happen as at runtime it will actually write out the package that's going to get executed so we're going to go ahead and run this and it's executing now and there we go alright so turn green and so let's go into C SSIS debug packages and the last one that was created is this one right here so we're going to go into our package or into our project here we're going to delete this one and we're going to add that one add existing and we should be able to go to our file system and there we go Let's open this up, click OK, and then it should be added to our solution here, and then we'll be able to take a look at how this works. So essentially what happened when this execute nugget package ran is that it went through, looked at where the um, business logic contained inside of the this package here was, and took it and replaced it inside of our package right here. So you'll see that. The result of that right here. So OLODB from our, our Nugget package, the derived column from our Nugget our, or our um, child Nugget package, and then the flat file destination. And we can look in here and see all this in here is everything is mapped up. So that's basically how you run uh, synchronous or, or run uh, Nuggets with the synchronous components. The next video is going to show you how to use the Nugget with asynchronous because it changes the outputs a little bit differently. But pretty much everything is the same.